morning, everyone. Our call to worship for today comes from Psalm 62. It reads, Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress and I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my right, mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. Let us pray. What is our only comfort in life and in death? That we are not our own, but belong, body and soul, in life and in death to our faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed Savior, we are not good at resting in the hollow of your hand. We have, not, we have been taught how to take charge. We have been taught how to be in control. But how to rest, Jesus? When you walked among the Jerusalem crowds and in the Judean hills, you pioneered this way of living. You were always alert and alive. You lived utterly responsive to the will of the Father. Manifold demands were placed upon you, and still you worked in unhurried peace and power. Help us to walk in your steps. Teach us to see only what you see, to say only what you say, to do only what you do. Help us, Lord, to work resting and to pray resting. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Sing with me how great is 
Here's our announcements for this week. Thank you for all of those who have continued to give through offering and for those who have moved to the new e-transfer. Because of you and God's provision, we have been able to sustain our operational costs as well as ministry activities through this time. And if you have any questions or would like to learn more, please email donate at cecctoronto.com. Many of our fellowship, education, and discipleship ministries have moved virtual. If you'd like to learn more, visit our website at cecctoronto.com. We're looking for additional support in content creation for our social media channels and website. If you're interested, please contact Brian at cecc at cecctoronto.com. And if you need any support during this time, please contact the CARE Committee. You can reach to, out to one of our pastors or Jerome Kyo. Thank you. Today's scripture reading can be found in the book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 1 to 3a. Again, that's in the book of Psalms, chapter 23, verses 1 to 3a. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, and he restores my soul. God bless the reading of his word. A few years ago, when I was playing my guitar, I was tuning the strings. I didn't have a tuner with me, so I was just trying to figure out the note by myself. I didn't realize I was stretching the strings too tight. As I started playing, one of the strings snapped, and I remember the pain, the sting, when the broken string stabbed my hand. My question is this, do you feel you are stretched too far? Do you feel like you're crazy busy? Are you like the string that is stretched too much that you feel like you might snap. According to a Greek legend in ancient Athens, a man noticed the great storyteller Aesop or Aesop from Aesop's Fables, that Aesop was playing childish games with some little kids. The man laughed and jeered at him, asked him why he wasted his time in such frivolous activity. Aesop responded by picking up a bow loosening its string, and placing it on the ground. Then he said to the critical man, Now answer the riddle if you can. Tell us what the unstrung bow implies. The man looked at it for several moments, but had no idea what point Aesop was trying to make. Aesop explained, If you keep a bow always bent, it will break eventually. But if you let it go slack, it will be more fit for use when you want it. People are also like that. If you keep a bow always bent for a long time, if you keep bending it without end, with no rest, eventually it might snap or break. That's why we all need to take some time to rest. If we don't, we will break. Some of us have been going on for too hard and for too long, so we become worn out. I just want to say that this would be a really good opportunity, if you haven't already, to begin practicing carving out time daily to slow down to commune with God in prayer and the Word. If we want to get over this restlessness, even before this pandemic started, I already remember some people sharing that they're very busy. I don't know how this pandemic has changed your stress level. Has it made you less busy? Has it made you busier? Has it made you busy in a different way? You know, this would be a really good opportunity to start carving out time daily to slow down, to spend time with God in prayer and the Word. That's why Jesus told his disciples after a busy day of ministry in John 6, Come away by yourselves 
to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Restlessness. What is restlessness? Restlessness is the inability to remain at rest. It's the unquiet or uneasy mind or heart. It's the feeling of perpetually feeling agitated, without rest or without restful sleep. It's unceasingly active. Do those definitions seem to describe you? If there was a picture in the dictionary for the word restless, would it have a picture of you on it? Do you sometimes feel restless? Do you sometimes feel like you're walking around feeling numb, feeling, feeling worn? You don't have the energy or the passion to keep going? Where do you find strength to keep going and to renew your soul? Today, I want to remind us that if we are seeking rest and renewal from our restless soul, to return to God and to begin carving out time regularly to slow down, to commune with Him. When I think of life in our Western society, I, 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 the first thing that comes to mind is a racetrack. We're all driving a, a, a race car. Round and around we go. I don't know why this picture always comes to mind. And the pace is always fast. And this lockdown for some of us is like a pit stop. To change tires, to refuel, to tighten some screws, and then to go fast again. I know that the thought of going back to normal for some people, for some of us, is something that we don't look forward to. I remember watching a video of a North Korean man who defected to South Korea. When he finally got to South Korea, he noticed so many of his classmates in university were so stressed. Life was so hectic. He found his peers that lives with so much pressure. He wanted to make it his life mission to help people to cope with their mental health. Kevin DeYoung says this, Is it any wonder the most stressed out people on the planet live in the most affluent countries? Why is that? Why are we so busy often? Do you sometimes feel like you're in a rat race? Do you feel like you're in an endless, self-defeating, pointless pursuit of you don't know what? And what's the result? The result is this kind of life is that we don't get to savor life. We don't slow down to smell the coffee or the roses. We don't slow down to gaze at the sunset or the evening stars. When was the last time you did that? I remember the last time I did that was when I was a young adult in a church retreat. We were at Fair Havens in Beaverton. And a bunch of us guys, we were just lying on the grass, gazing at the night sky. We saw shooting stars every few minutes, just shooting all across the sky. I miss those days. We don't get to save our life. We don't slow down. We miss out on relationships. And we blink, and our kids are taller than us. We blink, and our parents are in their 60s and their 70s. We blink, and we have so much white hair than we, we ever imagined. We're so restless. Why are we restless? Sometimes it's really because we're so busy, and that's the situation that we find ourselves in. But sometimes we're restless because we're worried about the future, overly worried. Or sometimes we, we're people pleasers. Sometimes we're perfectionists. And we find our joy in our success. We think we find rest from our success. But if we get our joy, our rest, our fulfillment, our feeling of accomplishment from our success, we will be disappointed because we're all imperfect people. And we're bound to fail once in a while. And that joy and rest from success is fleeting. It's unreliable. It's short-lived. So, dear brothers and sisters, what is the solution to all our restlessness? The main place that we can find real rest is in Christ. It's in Jesus. It's in the Lord. Look at Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. I just want to focus on these three verses of Psalm 23 today. What does this passage teach us? Let me share with you three. The first is this. 
The first is that we learn about the Good Shepherd, is that He provides everything that we need. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I have everything that I need. He provides for all our needs. If we live close to the Good Shepherd, you know that you will have everything that you need. The second is this. The second thing that we learn about the Good Shepherd is that He wants to provide us rest. He wants to provide you rest. Why can't we rest? Why can't we lie down in green pastures? Why are we so fidgety? Why are we always so restless? We are restless because of worry, overly, uh, over, too much worry. Sometimes we are worried about the future. Sometimes we're worried about our worth, our identity, what people think of us. But if you are in Christ, you know your worth is found in the fact that you belong to Him. When you are able to confidently say, the Lord is my shepherd, that's when you and I can rest. Did you notice that Psalm 23 starts with rest? He is the God who makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. How can we deal with this restlessness in our hearts? When we regularly draw near to our Good Shepherd, He reassures us of His care for us. Do you know the Christian life actually starts with rest? The Christian gospel is an invitation to rest, to rest from our own efforts. Jesus says, Come to me, all you are weary and heavy laden by all the pressures and expectations and worries, and I will give you rest. The invitation of Christ is to come to rest. But you may ask, How can God readily accept me and love me with all my sin and brokenness and all of my life's failures? The reason why He can be our Good Shepherd in Psalm 23 It's because of Psalm 22. The Good Shepherd Jesus laid down His life for us on the cross for our sins. Psalm 22 is a psalm of Jesus when He was on the cross. If we are willing to receive Him as our Lord and Savior, He also becomes our Good Shepherd. The problem is we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Many of us say, Lord, I'm so busy to mind you right now. The cares of this life has distracted us. I'll handle my life myself. I'll deal with my, my life, my own life. But the result is we are always restless. We never find rest on our own. We're always looking for that peace. But we can't find it anywhere except in Him. And He longs to provide us that rest that our soul craves. The invitation of God is for us to come to rest in Him. Are you worried about your future? Are you worried about what people think about you? Are you worried to be seen as a failure? But if you're living closely to your Good Shepherd, you know your worth is found in not what the world thinks about you, but rather what He thinks of you. Augustine asked this question, What makes me take my rest in you, so I can forget my restlessness and take hold of you, the one good thing in my life? To knowing that He alone can provide us real life and rest in going to Him. W.M. Thompson shares this, There are two kinds of sheep. Some sheep always keep near the shepherd. Each of them has a name to which it answers to the shepherd joyfully. And the kind shepherd is ever distributing to them choice portions which he gathers for their purpose. They are the contented and happy ones. They are in no danger of getting lost or into mischief, nor do wild beasts or thieves come near them. But the second kind of sheep, the majority, are mere worldlings, intent upon their mere pleasures or self-interest. They run from bush to bush, searching from, for variety of delicacies, and only now and then lift their heads to see where the shepherd is. And oftentimes, they lost, they lose their way. Dear brothers and sisters, which kind of sheep are you? We know that God wants to provide all our needs. We know that only God can give us real rest. But thirdly, it says, we learn that the Good Shepherd takes the initiative to give us the gift of rest. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. 
This passage shows us that God makes the first move. He's the one that makes us lie down. He's the one that restores our soul. He's the one that leads us beside quiet waters. But the question is, will you accept this rest? Will you go to Him? Sometimes we say in our hearts, but I'm so busy for God. I don't have time for you. I don't have time to slow down. I want to run my own life, depend on myself. That's self-reliance, self-centeredness, but it's idolatry. And our restlessness never ends. We try to find rest in wealth or power or earthly pleasure or worldly success. But it, in the end, it never really satisfies. And we don't find the rest. But in Psalm 23, we learn that God takes the initiative in inviting us to come to Him, to give us, to offer us this rest that only He can give. He takes the initiative. Remember in, with Adam and Eve, it was God who goes to the garden and asks them, where are you? And God is asking you and me today, where are you? David Roper says this, In some inexplicable way, God misses me, that I'm always on His mind, that He patiently, insistently calls me and seeks me. In Psalm chapter 27, verse 8, David says this, You have said, Lord, seek my face. And my heart says to you, Your face, Lord, I do seek. God calls us, seeking us to seek Him. God is pursuing us today. Through your life circumstances, through your situation, will you slow down and let God finally be the center of your life? It's a gentle persuasion, the way our Good Shepherd patiently, persistently encouraging a sheep to the place of rest. God says, I want to supply that rest. In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15, it says, This is what the Sovereign Lord the Holy One of Israel says, Only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. In quietness and confidence is your strength. But you would have none of it. We are so restless. We're running so fast. Going nowhere. And God is calling us to stop. To find our rest in Him. He's saying to us, I will be enough for you. I will provide for you. Who defines who you are? What the world says of you? Or what God thinks of you? If you will only walk closely with Him, you will find your confidence and your security in Christ. Marie Freeman says this, You're in a hurry. God is not. Trust God. Slow down. So if you haven't already you know, this would be a good opportunity to begin practicing, carving out time daily to slow down and just to commune with God in prayer and the Word. You know, we're made for relationship with God. So dear brothers and sisters, my question is this. Dear friends, God wants to provide us this rest. God invites us to rest in Him. Will we come to Him? Where do you find your rest? Where do you find your comfort? Where do you find your peace? in what you do, or your relationship with God. I just want to give us six applications from Dr. Mary Lynn. When we feel restless today, when we feel worn out and tossed to and fro by the pressures and stress of life, here are some reminders, here are some applications. The first is this. First, discover your key values in Christ. Discover your key values values in Christ. The Lord is your shepherd. Jesus said in John chapter 4 verse 34, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. You know, Jesus did not do it all. He did not try to do it all. He had so many people, had so many expectations of him, and yet he did everything God asked him to do. Discover your key values. What are your key values in life as a child of God? As a follower of Christ, what are your top four or five key values? What's important for you? What is God calling you to do? Just take time to list them down today. Write it in your journal. What are four or five things that are your key values as a child of God? For example, my top four or five are these. First of all, my relationship with God. Second is my family. Third, my, my church family or ministry or work. What are your key values as a follower of Christ? 
Identify them first. And the second is this. Guard your schedules. Guard your schedule. Set boundaries. Before you accept anything, when somebody invites you to do something, ask yourself, is this a key value that God wants me to do? In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says that very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they explained, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. What do we discover about Jesus from this passage? That he made his relationship, his communion with the Father, his first priority. Secondly, even though everyone was looking for him, he said to Simon, Simon says, everyone is looking for you. He said, let us go somewhere else. So I can go to the other villages and preach, because that is why I have come. Everyone has expectations of him, but he couldn't do everything that people expected of him. Many people might have expectations of you, but you have to find out what it is that God wants you to do. Dr. Mary Lynn said, when you are planning your schedule, do it backwards. Oftentimes we write our tasks first, and then when we have left over time, then we have our time with God. But rather, she says, do it backwards. First, schedule the things that fill your tank, your time with God first. Then fill in your task. If your schedule is full, remove the task, not your personal time with God. And thirdly, learn to rest. Learn to be still. Do you ever feel guilty for resting? Do you need to always be doing something? Do you always feel fidgety? Do you feel bad for stopping to slow down and to rest? But when the Good Shepherd made the sheep lie down in green pastures, the idea here is that He wants them to rest. He wants them to feel satisfied and to be content. It's tranquility. God gives rest. In Mark chapter 6, verse 31, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, Jesus said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. A quiet place to get some rest. There used to be a saying among Christian workers, we should burn out for Jesus. We must burn out for Jesus. But Jill Briscoe has a better suggestion. It is better for us, instead of burning out for Jesus, to burn on for Jesus. How do we burn on for Jesus? We work hard. But then we also rest well, Kevin DeYoung says this, Rest reminds us that God is God and we are not Him. We are also reminded that the world can and does continue without us. On my daughter Danielle's birthday this past week, I was busy. I was doing my work. But this was her day. And I saw her uh, not too far away from me and he was, she was working on this 600-piece puzzle off the world map and my heart was torn this was her day I was debating should I stop a while and play with her and I decided to do the same thing and I got off my chair and I went to help her find pieces of Asia and North America and I found that time of resting and uh, playing was a blessing and I realized I need to do that more often Psalm 46, verse 10, God reminds us, be still and know that I am God. And fourth suggestion is this, fix your sleep. Fix your sleep. Can you please turn to your, the person sitting beside you, if you have your family members there, fix your sleep. Sleep is one third of our lives. When Elijah was tired of the work and running from Queen Jezebel in 1 Kings 19, God gave him sleep and food. In Psalm chapter 3, verse 5, the psalmist says, When I lie down and sleep, I wake again because the Lord sustains me. In Psalm 4, verse 8, In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Sleep time is not waste time. Tony Schwartz says this, No single behavior more fundamentally influences our effectiveness in waking life than sleep. 
We've heard it said before, kids need about 10 to 11 hours of sleep. Teens, at least nine hours. Adults, about seven to nine hours. Dr. Mary Lynn says, sleep is God's antidote for healing and rest. But did you know studies show that one third of adults, 35% of adults in North America have insufficient sleep? You know, six hours or less of sleep in sig significantly shortens your life. According to Richard Swenson, did you know that the average American gets around two fewer hours of sleep per night of sleep rather than a century ago? Though we often brag about how little sleep we get, studies show sleep deprivation is a trigger for many health issues. Kevin DeYoung says this, We cannot go without sleep for very long, without doing our bodies and souls great damage. God made us finite and fragile. God made us to spend almost a third of our lives not doing anything except depending on Him. Sleep is humbling because we can't do anything but to depend on Him. You know, why don't, why don't you cast your cares on Him and go to sleep? Because He'll be up all night anyways. In summary, what we talked about, some suggestions, some take-home, some application is first discover your key values in Christ. And then guard your schedule, set your boundaries, and then learn to rest, learn to stop, and then fix your sleep. And the fifth is this, you know, find your underlying motives, find your underlying motivations. Why can't we stop working? Why are we always so restless? Why do we always have to go, go, and go? Why do we feel restless often? Sometimes we have wrong motivations. Sometimes it's because we overly worry about the future. We can't let go of control. We, we think that if we let go of the gas pedal, our world will fall apart. Kevin DeYoung uh, gives some suggestions, some, some reasons, uh, some, some role motivations, some underlying motivations that we have of why we're often so restless. Uh, one is uh, people-pleasing. People-pleasing. We do too many things because we say yes to too many people because we want people to like us. Second is this proving myself. Some of us never rest because we are still trying to prove something to, some, to someone, maybe to a former classmate, because we want to prove ourselves. Third is perfectionism. I can't let up because I can't make a mistake. But why? And the fourth is prestige. If I keep pushing myself, I'll finally be somebody. I'll finally matter. I'll finally arrive. Nonsense. You will not be satisfied. What is our underlying motivation? Why we are always so restless? Why we can't stop? Why are we always so busy? Sometimes we have to find out our underlying motivation. Is it godly? Or is it self-centered? Did we make ourselves busy because we want to please others? We want to prove ourselves or we want to, we want to find prestige? In the end, what is your motivation in what we do? I've heard it said before, if people pleasing is your goal, you will be enslaved to people because people can be harsh taskmasters when you give them this power over you. But if Jesus is the master of your life, he will also be your first love. You're serving him as rooted and grounded in his vast, unconditional love that he already has for you. If you work with wrong motives, you will always be restless. What is the solution to our wrong motives? It's to remember the God that we have talked about in Psalm 23. To know the Lord is already my shepherd. I have everything I need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. What drives you? Who is your master? To find your security and identity in Him is to find rest. And finally, cultivate your spiritual life. Cultivate your spiritual life. During this time, why not begin practicing carving out time every day to know this Good Shepherd? Slow down in the world, in the Word, and don't rush it. Say with King David in Psalm 63, verse 1 O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. 
my flesh faints for you. I see a dry and weary land where there is no water. Spend time in solitude with the Lord. Solitude begins with a time and place for God and Him alone. Find a quiet place and get some rest. David Roper says this, Until we take time to be quiet, we will not hear God. There's something to be said for meeting God before our busy days and schedules begin to tyrannize us. Now start your day with God. Begin your day, your morning, with God. With God. Find a Bible, a quiet place, an uninterrupted period of time, and just be with Him. A.W. Tozer says, Stay in that secret place till the surrounding noises begin to fade out of your heart, till a sense of God's presence has enveloped you. Listen for His inward voice till you learn to recognize it. You know, I don't think that you say, oh, I want to carve out five minutes of devotion, a quick devotion before I start. You know, to find rest, you need to slow down. You need to be still. You need to stop and rest. Only those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Only those who are quiet find God's mercies are new every morning. Don't just breeze through the Bible. Don't just say, oh, I read through the Bible already and then I'm going to close it and then I'm going to go on my day. But rather, slow down and, and chew on the Word and reflect on what God is saying to you through the Word. In summary, here's some advice when we feel restless. Discover your key values. Guard your schedule. Set your boundaries. Learn to rest. Fix your sleep. Check your motives. And cultivate your time with God regularly. Dear brothers and sisters, we live fast-paced lives. We're running around, running over and over, and we don't know where we're going. And we keep trying to reach the goal, but we can never reach it. And we're living in an unsustainable pace. And are you tired? We need to slow down. Where do we find this rest? Where, where do we find tranquility? We try to find it in, in worldly success or, or, or pleasure or the things of this world. But we never find it. It's always elusive. But we find rest. We can only find rest when we learn to run, when we learn to draw near to our Good Shepherd who longs to restore our soul. Are you willing? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence and we just want to pray. We confess. Oftentimes, we're so restless. We're so busy. We're so distracted. We're trying to find peace and rest and joy in the things of this world. And it's always so elusive and it's short-lived. Lord God, but you already offer us this rest. Lord, we pray that we would be eager to come to you. As a deer pants for the water, so our soul lost after you. Lord God, we thank you so much for the promise you said, taste and see that the Lord is good. So we pray that help us to start, begin practicing, to meditate on your word day and night, to draw near to your presence, to sit at your feet, that we would be able to say with David, and one thing I seek, one thing I ask, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Lord, give us this rest, for we are restless. And if today, if maybe you're not walking with God, if you're far away from God, I want to give you this invitation to come near God. You know, He's already seeking after you. He's pursuing you. As he pursued Adam and Eve and asking, where are you? Today, God is asking you also, where are you? Are you like the lost sheep, far away from him? He wants to invite you to draw near. He wants to give you rest. 
Jesus bore our sins on the cross. He's the good shepherd who laid down his life for us. We no longer have to work for our salvation. Jesus paid the price completely for us. Are you tired and weary? Jesus says, come to me all you're weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Will you today come home? Will you return to Christ today? If you do, I just invite you to pray with me this prayer. Lord God, I admit that I am a lost sheep. And I've been trying to find peace and rest in so many different places and trying to look for love in so many places and I've been so restless and my heart is uneasy and I realize today that what I need in my life is you. Lord, I'm I'm coming home. I want to invite you to be my Lord and Savior, Jesus. Please forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Lord, help me right now. May your Holy Spirit fill me and help me to know what it means to be in relationship with you. And may I grow in this relationship starting today. May I know you more and know more of your love. Help me to put you as the center of my life. We praise you and we thank you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you prayed with me that prayer to invite Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, I want to invite you to send an email to us, to reach out to us, so that we can pray with you, so that we can reach out to you and share with you some next steps that you could do to help you in your growth in Christ. God bless you all, and have a blessed week.